Hello and welcome to another adventure here on my channel. Today I'm going to be ranking my eyeshadow palettes. So if you like playing with makeup and talking about the beauty community slash industry just as much as I do, make sure you hit that subscribe button and notification bell so you'll be notified of all future content. Now I did do the same video last year and I want to make it an annual thing, but this year's version is going to be a little bit different in that last year I did it very much based on if I could only keep X amount of palettes. So if I could only keep one palette, that was my favorite palette and so on. Whereas this year it is purely going to be based on how much do I like the thing. Also, while the vast majority of my palettes will be included, not every single one will be ranked in this video because I just feel like there are some palettes I haven't had long enough to give an honest ranking, but this is still the vast majority. And with that, let's go ahead and dive right on in with last place number 34. I am ranking 34 eyeshadow palettes. My collection has exploded this year. But number 34 is the NARS Zen palette in, I believe this is the Kyoto one. I think I pronounced that wrong probably, but this was a Japan exclusive and a subscriber of mine actually offered to send it to me and have me pay her back. And I am so, so grateful that she did that because it's really cool to get Japan exclusive makeup that I was really interested in. But this is last place because even though I do use it and I do enjoy this palette, every time I see this, I just think of how expensive it was. And honestly, if I knew how expensive it was before she sent it to me, I would have told her, you know what, never mind, because this is just, it, it was overpriced. I'm glad I have it, it's a special item, but every time I see it, I just go, I spent more money than I should have on that, and that is why it is in last place. Number 33 is the C Color Prestige Palette. This is a dupe of ABH Soft Glam, and the formula of this is fantastic. I really like the formula, no complaints there, but this is just not my color story. I don't really reach for this palette very often. I actually decluttered this palette and then put it back in my collection, moved it from the declutter pile back onto my shelf because even though I don't reach for it too much, Soft Glam is such a staple palette in this community. So many people love it. So many people do tutorials with it that I just wanted this to stay because I like having a good, solid, high quality dupe of that palette in my collection. And along the same vein, number 32 is the C Color Dusk to Dawn palette. This is a dupe of the ABH Jackie Aina palette, and the only reason this is so low, again, it has nothing to do with the quality. This just is not my color story. This is not what I'm reaching for all the time. Again, I moved this to the declutter pile and then put it back in my collection because I was like, eh, I don't really want to get rid of it quite yet because this is so beautiful, so unique. So many people talk about the Jackie Aina palette that I'm glad to have a really good quality, solid dupe dupe of it in my collection, even if I wouldn't have necessarily chosen it for myself. I forgot to say that both of these were sent to me in PR. Some of my C-Color palettes were, and some of them were not, and I will try to remember to mention which is which as I go. Next is number 31, the Midas Cosmetics Green Tea Macchiato Quad. This is such high quality. Midas shadows are absolutely beautiful. I think the color story of this is really cute. I love the theming. This is so low because, again, it is not something I am reaching for all the time. It's just a little too dark for me. I feel like if this this shimmer shade had been a lighter shade, like maybe champagne, I would probably reach for this all the time, but it's just a little too dark for what I like on the day to day. But the quality is so fantastic that I just, I don't want to get rid of it. I really like this. I really like having a product from Midas in my collection because they are a really good brand. So this is hanging around even if I can't rank it any higher. Then palettes 30 and 29 are my Huda Beauty Pastel Obsessions palettes. This one would be ranked just below the mint just because I have used the mint palette more and I tend to reach for it more, but they're both really good quality. The only reason they're this low is because I really only use these in the spring. I used both of these pretty much all spring and then summer came along and I was out of the mood for pastels, but I really do like them. I'm glad they're in my collection, but since it's a season thing. I don't want to rank them higher. However, because I have these and I love them so much, I don't need any more pastels. And I was tempted so many times this year because pastels were just in style this year. But because I have these two, I did not buy any more pastel palettes and I'm happy with these being the pastels in my collection. For number 28, I chose the Laura Lee Los Angeles 
party animal palette. Now this is so low only because this is not my go-to color story. I don't wear colors this much, but the quality is amazing. I actually bought its sister palette, which is a neutral palette that is not going to be in this ranking because I bought it fairly recently, but the quality is outstanding. I love this. I'm glad I have this in my collection. I need no more neons. I have all the neons I need in this palette, but since I don't reach for neons too, too often, again, I just couldn't rank this any higher, but it has nothing to do with the quality of the palette. I'm glad I have it in my collection for when I do want a neon look or to incorporate a neon shadow. And then the number 27 palette is Baby It's Cold Outside by Glam Vice. This is a beautiful holiday themed palette. I am glad this is the holiday palette I have because I think it's so stunning and perfect. Quality is excellent. I really like the packaging. I like that I can easily remove and change around the shadows even though I haven't done that. This was limited edition for them last year but I don't know if they'll be bringing it back for this year but if they do I highly recommend it. I think it's super cute. The reason this is so low is because I found out through this palette that I will only reach for a really holiday seasonal themed palette around the holidays. I enjoyed this very much, pretty much through January actually, but as soon as I was really out of the holiday festivities, I have not touched this since. So it's really good, but since it's a one or two month a year I use this palette, I can't rank it any higher. But I do want to try more Glam Vice products and I would not be opposed to picking up another one of their palettes in the future. Okay, I believe this is number 26, but I may be wrong about that. But the Revolution Earth Palette. This is a beautiful palette. I think the quality is nice. It's not the most amazing formula I've ever used. This matte blue is kind of insane though. I really like that. There's some really interesting greens and blue shimmers in here. But the reason this is so low is because one, the formula is good, but it's not great. But also, I just don't reach for blues a ton. This is my blue palette. I do not need any more blues in my collection because it's one of the shades that I just hardly ever reach for. I'm glad I have them. I'm glad I have the option of them, but I can't rank this palette any higher. Also, there's not nearly enough mattes for this big of palette. I'm okay with this being a big palette because I think they did a really good job towing that line between having a cohesive color story for a big palette, but also it not being too repetitive. So I don't mind that it's big. It's just just too blue and too shimmery for me to rank any higher, even though I do really, really, really like the greens in here. And when I'm looking for a blue, this is the palette I go to. Then I believe 25, the Revolution Reloaded Division palette. This is their dupe of Subculture, and I really enjoy this palette. The reason it's so low is because the formula is just good for the price. This is a $7 palette. I got mine at Marshalls for $5, and it's good for that price. They're good quality eyeshadows, but they're just more on the lightly pigmented side. So I do have to build them up a lot, but they do blend really well. So they're not bad eyeshadows. I did use this a lot this fall, especially I made a look I just loved and wore constantly using these three shades, the, you know, most neutral shades in the palette, of course, because I am me. But I do really like this color story and I'm glad I added this to my collection. I just, again, can't really rank it any higher simply because of the formula. Even though it's not bad, it's worth keeping. It's just not great. And then palette 24, my Revolution Mars palette, the Earth's sister palette. And this one does rank higher because I do reach for these more warm orangey tones more frequently. And this does have a better proportion of mattes to shimmers. However, I have gotten some more warm neutrally palettes since this. And because I have those smaller color stories, I've been reaching for this larger palette less. I still really like this. I stand by that the quality is really good on this palette. These Mars and Earth palettes definitely have a better formula than this smaller palette, but I still just don't reach for it as much because of its size, though I can do pretty much any warm tone look I want with this palette. And I do recommend it if you're just looking for a ton of warm shades all in one go for not a lot of money. So for 23, if again, I haven't messed up my numbers, the ABH Norvina Volume 3 palette. I am surprised this is not higher too because I absolutely adore the Norvina Pro Palette formula. I think it is super good. It's in my top five favorite formulas, maybe top three favorite formulas, which is why I bought this palette because I went, oh my gosh, I love my four so much, which spoiler alert is much higher on the list. I also really like this color story. It was half off around my birthday. I picked it up as a birthday gift to myself and I have used this once. 
I'm ashamed to say that because I do like it. I think it's a beautiful palette. It worked just as well as the four, but I just don't reach for this and I don't really know why, but the formula is absolutely fantastic and I do like it, so I'm keeping it and I'm gonna make more of an effort to use it more, but I just can't rank it any higher considering I've only used it one time. And then 22 is the Ace Beauté Flare Palette. This packaging is absolutely stunning. It's a really nice cardboard. The shades, beautiful. The formula, beautiful but I just haven't been inspired to pick this up since I reviewed it. I don't know why, I just don't really think to grab this in the morning if I go over to my palette collection, I'm looking for a palette. This one just does not stand out to me as, oh yeah, I need to use that. Whenever I look at it and grab it, I'm like, yeah, that's a good palette, I need to use that and I'll use it like once and then I just won't think about it again. But I just, again, can't rank this any higher, even though I like it. It's a good color story. I love the grungy tones. I love that I can get a fairly neutral look out of this really colorful palette, or I can play more and do more color. I. I like it, I do, I just don't really reach for it. And now we're getting into more the middle tier, to that mid zone of I really like these palettes. They're just not quite my favorite. And the first of that middle tier, number 21, is the Juvia's Place Nomad palette. This is my only Juvia's Place palette and I see why people rave over this brand so much. The quality is absolutely outstanding. I love this color story. I love the packaging. It feels really high quality. But the reason I can't rank this any higher is because I don't love the shimmer formula. It just has too much fallout. I'm someone who I like to do my face first. I just do. So fallout does bug me. I will deal with it if I like the formula enough and I do really, really like these but I don't want to reach for it all the time because of that reason. But if Fallout doesn't bug you and you like a really intense metallic shimmer, this is a wonderful palette and I would highly recommend checking out Juvia's Place. Number 20, and I'm sure you guys are going to be surprised that this is so low on the list, the Dominique Cosmetics Latte 2 palette. When I bought this, I thought that's going to be my new favorite palette and the color story, oh my gosh, color story is fantastic. This would be a go-to everyday palette for me. The only issue is these shimmers are just too intense for me to wear on an everyday basis, and this color story is an everyday color story for me. I do like this palette. I do reach into this palette regularly, usually for an all matte look. I just, I don't love the shimmer formula, so again, it has to be lower on the list, though this color story is perfection. If you like a really intense shimmer, and you like these colors, then this is a great palette. Is there a hair in one of those eyeshadows? Um, I don't know if you can see that, but uh, there's a little hair poking out of that eyeshadow. I'm gonna have to investigate that later. We're just gonna move on for now. Palette number 19 is the Too Faced Just Peachy Mattes palette. This has been a favorite in my collection for a long time. I am kind of surprised that it is so low on this list, but I realized this is less of a favorite and more of a staple in my collection. It just would not feel like my collection without this palette. I've had it so long, I've enjoyed it so much. I know it doesn't look like I have dipped into this frequently, but I have. I've actually used this palette a lot. It just doesn't show wear that easily. And because I've had it so long and I've liked it so much and I reach into it fairly frequently, it is a staple in my collection, but I just don't have a ton of excitement. Oh my gosh, I absolutely love it like some of the higher ranked palettes. But if I didn't have this in my collection, it just wouldn't feel like my collection. Number 18 is the C Color Cosmetics Cherry 2 palette. They did send me this in PR and this is my newest C Color palette, but I like it so much. The formula is impeccable except except for this blue. This blue is garbage, but the rest of the palette is wonderful and honestly that's the shade I would use the least anyway, so I don't really care, but the rest of these shades, beautiful. Love the mattes, love this shimmer formula. It's not too intense, but it's still nice and metallic and it's just a perfect balance for me. Berries, neutrals, it's a very me palette. I very much enjoy this palette. It's a little bit newer to my collection, so that's why I think it's more hanging around the middle. I'll see next year if it moves up. But if you've had your eye on the Dominique Cosmetics Berries and Cream palette, I think this is a really great affordable dupe of it, again, except for that blue. So maybe take a look at it if that's a palette you've had your eye on. Number 17 is my Urban Decay Naked 2, my very first eyeshadow palette ever. My first purchase from Sephora, I just fell in love the second I saw it and 
I'm so glad I have this. Obviously, I'm really fond and kind of nostalgic for it because I do have that personal connection of this is the palette that got me into makeup, but I also love the fact that I'm still using this fairly regularly. It's not something I reach for all the time, but I love cool tone neutrals. And this is a really solid cool tone neutral palette. I do wish there was more mattes and that's kind of what keeps me from reaching for it all the time, but it's still such a great staple palette in my collection. And like I said, I'm, I, I have, I'm sentimental about it, but I do still use it fairly regularly and it still works just fine even though I have had it for a really long time by this point. For number 16, I chose the Novla Cosmetics Wild Berry Cutie Palette. This formula is amazing. This is an outstanding formula. I highly recommend trying Nabla if there is a palette that you've had your eye on from them because the formula so good. I love these berry purple tones. I don't wear them all the time. This is more of a I'm in a mood for purples type of palette, which is why it's more in the middle, even though that formula, so fantastic. Also, the shade Alchemy 2.0, it's appropriate they named it Alchemy because it is magic. This is actually my second one of this palette because I dropped and absolutely shattered the first one and I was like, no, I need that in my collection. I love it so much. So I am glad I went ahead and picked up a new one because I still love it. I still think this is a fantastic palette. And then palette number 15, Milani Soft and Sultry, which may be surprising that this is so low, but again, this is one of those palettes that it's not so much a favorite anymore as just an absolute staple. I love cool tone palettes. I love cool tone neutrals. Even though this year I've really gotten into warm tone neutrals and orangey shades, my heart lies with cool tone neutrals. And this is just such a great staple cool tone neutral palette. I've almost hit pan in this shade and I have significant dips in several of the other shades. But since it isn't something I'm reaching for all the time nowadays, because I have been leaning more towards warm tones recently, I can't rank it any higher this year, but I have no intention of ever decluttering this until I use it up or it goes bad because it is so good. And like I said, it is one of those staple palettes to me. And then number 14, ColourPop's Smoke Show. This is now the Blow and Smoke palette, but you can still get it on their website. It is a monochromatic gray, white, black, monochromatic, and then I list three colors, but you get what I mean. Beautiful, interesting, unique palette, unique to my collection and unique in the industry. I think it's hard to do a truly unique color story nowadays, but ColourPop really did with this palette. The quality is excellent. I love, like I said, I love cool tone shades. I love grays, I love silvers. So I can get a silver smoky eye out of this palette or I can combine it with other things. This is one of the few palettes in my collection that I will pair with other things. I usually like to stick to one palette, but this is something I do pair with other things to deepen it up, pull the other palette in a more cool tone direction, add a gray, add a silver, stuff like that, or I can get just a beautiful look out of this palette. So really, really glad I have this. And number 13 is kind of similar, just opposite to Smoke Show, and that is the Good As Gold palette, because this is my gold palette. That's my silver palette, this is my gold palette beautiful, beautiful color story. I had been lusting after Naked Honey for so long and I'd been lusting after this too. And then I saw them swatched next to each other and I was like, oh, I can just get one. I'm gonna go for the good as gold because it was on sale. And I am so glad I did because I genuinely love this palette so much. I mean, it's a bit of a one trick pony in that I'm gonna get either a gold or yellowy look out of it, but Gold is a beautiful color and I don't have a ton of gold in the rest of my collection, so I like this. It is lower because it's not super flexible, but I do really like this. The quality is excellent and I, I'm glad I chose this over Naked Honey. Number 12 is the Tammy X Revolution Carnival palette. This is my rainbow palette. I did a whole video about the quest for the perfect rainbow palette and this one and I was right. I stand by that decision. This is an absolutely stunning, perfect rainbow palette. These shades, Calypso and Notting Hill, are two of my favorite shades in my entire collection. I love that I can do pretty much any rainbow look I want out of this, or a lot of very monochromatic looks. I like that there's a black, the mattes blend beautifully, the shimmers are really nice, like literally no complaints. This is why I don't need any more rainbow palettes. Did that stop me? from buying the ColourPop one. No, no, it didn't. It's on the way to my house. It should be here tomorrow, 
after I'm filming this, but, but I still love it. I still absolutely love it. And next, number 11, the Morphe Hit the Lights palette. This is my only Morphe palette because overall I just don't really get along with Morphe. I don't think their quality is that great. And they're kind of a shady company, but this palette. I am so glad I have this palette. I know everyone else seemed to hate it and think it was a terrible release, but I loved it and I stand by that. And I am so glad I picked this up. This is the best quality from Morphe I have ever experienced. It's not great, but it's good. And this color story is just a playground. This is a makeup playground to me. This is what I reach for when I am just in the mood to create something fun. I personally really love how they broke up this palette into quadrants. So you have your red quadrant, your neutrals quadrant, your more holographic duochrome quadrant, and your brights quadrant, and then you have all these beautiful topper shades or highlighters. I just, I love this palette. I'm so glad I have it. I think it's discontinued, but you might still be able to get it on Morphe's website at a discount. And if you can, I do recommend this. This and their beauty sponge are the only Morphe products I recommend, but I am just so happy I have this palette and I love it so, so freaking much. Also, this packaging is so freaking pretty. And here we are, the top 10. So in 10th place is the Revolution Life on the Dance Floor VIP palette. Some people may find this really boring and I honestly don't know why I love this so, so much, why it made the top 10 and everything else so far has not but there's just something about this palette I love. It's such a good go-to everyday palette for me. The shimmers are more on that soft side, which I like for an everyday look. I don't know, there's just, there's just something about this palette I love and I don't know how to explain it, but it's number 10 and I'm so glad it's in my collection. Number nine is what I'm wearing today, the ColourPop All That palette, beautiful. I love it. This was their Valentine's Day release this year and I have not stopped using it since I picked it up. I am so glad I got this. I think the quality is absolutely fantastic. This is what got me on a ColourPop kick this year. Last year I had one ColourPop palette, the Smoke Show palette, and now I have a lot. Three ColourPop palettes are in the pile of I have not had them long enough to rank. Like, I have bought so many ColourPop palettes this year and this is what started it all because the quality is just outstanding. I love the color story. I love pinks and reds in makeup because you can go more in a colorful route with it or you can kind of tone it down a little bit and have a more neutrally pink look and this palette is just so versatile within the same color family. I, I love it. Like I said, I'm wearing it today. Beautiful, beautiful palette. And now number eight the Carly Bible palette from ABH. I actually talked myself out of this palette at first, but a month later I was still thinking about it and it was still on my wish list. So I was like, you know what? It's on sale, I'm gonna pick it up. I am so glad I did. I love this palette so much because this is a really fun neutral palette and fun neutral palettes is pretty much what I've been using this year. I want more than average neutrals. I want neutrals with a twist and this gives me that. This gives me flexibility to play and still get a soft, pretty, more neutral look or I can amp it up with this palette. There are three really intense metallics but there are some more softer shades too so I have the choice and I like that and that's what this palette gives me is just a ton of choice within a soft neutrally color story. Number seven, which is also my number one C color palette, the Frost. This was one of the first C color palettes I tried. I did buy this myself and it is still the king of my C color palettes. It's a dupe of the Kylie Cosmetics Nice palette and I like this for a lot of the same reasons I like the ABH Carly Bible palette in that it's an interesting neutrals palette. I can get so many different absolutely beautiful looks out of this that still pull neutral or I can amp it up a little bit. These shimmers are not quite as intense metallic as the ABH ones but they're still beautiful. The quality is outstanding. The packaging is a little cheap but it's still cute. I still like it and I just I love this palette so much. This is what made me fall in love with C color and I'm so glad I got into that brand this year. And then number six, the last one that did not make the top five, my ABH Norvina Volume 4 Pro Palette. This is what made me fall in love with the Norvina formula. It's fantastic. This palette is fantastic. It is so fun. This is 
a neutral lovers colorful palette or I've heard one of you in the comments say it's a colorful lovers neutral palette you can go really insanely bright with this or you can really tone it down again there are these more intense shimmers and metallics or there's some softer ones too there's two pressed glitters in here to play with which I like a pressed glitter especially in a palette this big it just gives me more options I've continued to have fun reaching for this throughout the year I just think it's a fantastic Barbie girl of a palette and I've actually been able to say no to a lot of really pink palettes this year because I'm like I already have this one and it's fantastic why would I need another Barbie girl palette and finally top five number five is the Kaleidos Futurism One Sci-Fi Green Palette. This is one of those YouTube made me buy it palettes. So many of the creators I watch were loving Kaleidos Cosmetics and I was like, okay, I'm gonna bite the bullet and try it and I am so glad I did. This is my favorite eyeshadow formula. I'm confident in saying this is my number one eyeshadow formula because it is just it's so good. It blends like it can read your mind. The mattes are pigmented, but not overly pigmented. The shimmers are stunning. They're a little bit more intense than I like on an everyday basis, but not so, so intense that I don't ever feel comfortable wearing it. I love that it's sci-fi themed. I love the grungy greens. I love the oranges. My only critique is I wish these two greens were a little more different on the eye, but I love this palette. I reach for it a ton. It is just such a joy to work with. And number four is the Kylie Cosmetics Kendall palette. I'm actually surprised that this ranked as high as it does, but I'm more surprised that I used it as much as I have. Something about this palette, I just picked it up about a month ago and I was like, yeah, I want to use that today. And I just haven't been able to put it down. It's such a good color story. I do really enjoy the formula. It's not my favorite eyeshadow formula in the world, but it's still a really solid formula. The shimmers are a little more intense than I usually like, but there's just something so soft in their intensity like I don't I don't know how to describe it super well they're really sparkly and intensely shiny but like I said there's just something soft there that looks really pretty on the eyes every single look I've done with this has just been really pretty but then there's all these fun colorful shades to play with too and I think this is just a really well done half neutral half colorful palette I like that there's way more mattes than shimmers but you have the shimmers you need and I've just really been loving this palette so it is in fourth place third place is the Colourpop whatever palette I honestly thought this would be second place because it is so so freaking good this is my go-to warm neutrals palette and it's not too neutral. I can get a really neutral look out of this or I can get a really orangey look out of this or even a really pretty burgundy look out of this. Ditching You right here is one of my favorite shades in my collection. It is the perfect multi-dimensional orange but it's not too intense but it's still really pretty. Not Okay is also a beautiful more pumpkin spicy orange. I have no complaints. I have no notes. I love that this has a pressed glitter for me to play with. I love that it has a super shock shadow in Tardy. I just love this palette and it is one of my favorites. I wanted this for over a year, but when it came out, I was like, I don't really wear warm tones, but since I got into warm tones, I am so glad I went back and picked this up. And then second place, the one that actually beat out the whatever palette, the ColourPop Gather Round Sisters Hocus Pocus palette. I thought this would be in third place and whatever would be in second place, but I realized that this, this is my second place palette. This color story is just so good for me. It works with my coloring so well, and these are the shades I love to use. While I do have some warm tone neutrals, I also have some cool tone neutrals and some colorful shades to play with. Love the reds, love the greens. The purples are, purple's not my favorite go-to pop of color, but I did make a beautiful look using these purples. There's a pressed glitter for me to play with, and there's four of these sequin shades, and I love the sequin shade formula, so I am glad that there are four of them in this palette, even though I know other people were not happy with that. I love that it's Hocus Pocus. I mean, I'm a huge Hocus Pocus fan. It is one of my favorite movies from childhood. And I think that actually played against this palette because so many people who were really into Hocus Pocus, I saw not liking this palette and not liking what they did with it, but I absolutely love it. So I am very happy with this. I'm happy this is in my collection. Even if it was not Hocus Pocus, this still would be my second favorite palette because the color story is just so great, so versatile. The quality is there. Again, color pop, no notes. Think they absolutely killed this. And then my number one favorite eyeshadow palette, if you've been watching my channel for a while, you will not be surprised in the least, the Soap X Revolution Extra Spice palette. This just has pretty much everything I love in a palette 
all in one. It all works together so well. I can get a really neutral look. I can get a really colorful look. There's a yellow, a red, these grungy greens. Like I just love this palette so much. The quality is great. This is the best quality Revolution palette I have. They really saved the really good formula for the collab palettes. And I just love that this can be an everyday go-to or a more fun creative palette. It is my most used palette. I've done so many beautiful, beautiful, interesting looks with this. I think Soph Does Nails or She Soph Does Life Now absolutely killed it with this palette. I've had this since it came out, I think over two years now. It's been one of my favorites for a long time, but this year I really realized, no, this is my favorite palette. It is that good. So no surprises for number one, but I would love to hear what your favorite palette is. Please let me know down in the comments what's your favorite, top five if you want to share. Again, thank you so, so much for watching, and I will see you all next time.